here's something that we all need to understand. The thing about the government is that it's not accountable. This is like huge. You cannot forget this because our memory seems to forget over and over again the scandals, the corruption, the constant scamming, the constant lying. And they put forward this theater over and over again in, the, in their House of Commons or their meetings and all the meetings that they control. They have the justice system and they have the crown and they have their black robes and they have their red carpets. And it's all a theater to get the masses to condone and believe in the jurisdiction and authority of what they're putting forward. All of us have gone through years and years and years of indoctrination since we were a, ch a child without the choice of saying we want to participate or not. And we reach a stage where we've been so conditioned, we've been so brainwashed. We don't know we're brainwashed. We don't know we're following orders. We don't know we're stepping to the line. We just obey in an unconscious way. Because this part of our mind has been so patterned that it runs past the conscious mind's true ability to assess the situation, to truly understand what's occurring. And so getting back to the beginning of the govern, government not being accountable is they hold us accountable. If you're over a certain time limit with a parking meter, you get like a $60 fine, $100 fine, $150 if you don't pay. Who has the money to pay for a stupid freaking fine? And then it just gets worse and worse and worse to the point, you know, you can't even drive. You can't even move. What they're doing right now is they're stopping and regulating your movement. And they're going to try to do it on the internet. They're going to try to do to the internet what they did to television. You can only get this. This is what you can say, or your license will be taken away. And that's behind it all. Like they're trying to implement these bills behind all of this stuff to make it worse for the internet and our use of it. And you, you can't forget this. There's something in the Canadian people's minds that is insane. The amount of slack it gives to the government. The amount of slack that it, it doesn't. We, we don't give it to friends if they were treating us this way. We don't give it to anyone if they're treating us this way. But if the government treats us horribly, well, hell, that's just the way it is. That's just who's in charge. They can do whatever they want. And they're not freaking accountable. They make mistakes. They lie. They, they do genocides. But oh well, everything's okay now. We can just reconciliate. If someone came to my house and tried to take my five-year-old child, I'd blow their fucking head off. Anyone who came near me, anyone who came near the house, and most Whites would do that. But those psychopath whites did it to the First Nations people. We have to take this into account that there are distinct differences between the people that are supposedly running the country and the rest of us. And we believe that they're there to assist us and they're basically there to rob us. And they just keep robbing us. And they're doing things behind the scenes we have no idea about. And meanwhile, moron decisions are being made around raw logs and water and all our resources. How can a country like Canada, with the amount of people we have and the amount of resources we have, have any child poverty, any homelessness? Why are we getting robbed? Robbed. Because we give in to this insanity that has become a government, which supposedly in Latin means mind control. So if you get this video, it's like, I'm trying to get through to you. 
I'm trying to get through to the people on the fence or the people that know what's going on, but are unwilling to do anything about it because you have such a comfortable life. I mean, really, we have running water, we have food, we have a house, we have screens, we have our friends and our loved ones. What more do we need? Just leave those people, you know, just leave us alone, right? But now they're coming to the point of completely disturbing our lifestyle. Like before they could get away with their stuff and we were having a fine life and fine. Okay, just do your stuff. But now all of us, like, don't you see it? It's getting worse and worse and worse. And Canada is like one of the worst countries on the planet. We're like the easiest ones. You know, China, United States, Israel, whoever they are, are just doing whatever they want with us. And whoever is that joke of a prime minister and whoever the people are around, and it doesn't matter who goes in power, it doesn't matter if it's conservative or liberal, and that's the problem. You know, they're both wings of the same bird. But the people, oh, I think I'll vote every four years and hopefully they're going to change because they said they're going to change. Ah, uh, they don't, right? By this age, I watched enough time to see that every freaking prime minister is in the hands of some puppet master that does not have the concerns of the people in their mind. And I watch us Canadians and it's like, oh, like we're a great people. We're, we have so many brilliant, beautiful artists, originators. We have so many engineers. We, we have so many people of talent. And yet every month people are afraid of the bills they have to pay because they don't have enough money. You know, let's be serious. Our economics suck. And why? Because there's a goddamn usury system that's fleecing all of the extra cash out of countries through payment interest on interest. You know, the international banking system is the biggest scam there is. And that's never brought into the equation. So you're not going to solve any problems dealing with crooks in a crook system, pretending to be the way it is because they own the media and they own the banking system and they own everything. And we think, oh no, it's just this, it's this, it's this, it's this, the corporations, the 1%, the one, they're people, actual family bloodlines. And they always get away with it because they create disinformation everywhere. People point their fingers and everyone's fighting against each other when they're just being manipulated. They're being manipulated by smaller groups of very intelligent people who know how to manipulate things but now, because of the internet, there's so many fingers pointing to them. There's so many people who know what's going on because it's so freaking obvious. And if you took away their media and we used our own media, we would know very quickly, you know, who is who and which side is which side. There's like 99% of us and there's below 1% of them. There's billions of us, hundreds of thousands of them, and they're running us to the ground. They will extinguish our species because their greed is out of control. And now it's just everything out of control. We have to build a whole new system. We have to create something that is good for everyone, fair for everyone. Put it on the blockchain, create new ways of doing business that is in alignment with natural law, is in alignment with the ecosystem, is in alignment with treating everybody with respect. And until we get to that point, if you're trying to fix something that can't be fixed, you're focusing your attention upon the old paradigm. This old paradigm is based upon fear. The new paradigm is based upon love. The new paradigm is based upon treating each other well, not trying to steal a country's resources, not making up wars and then ruining millions of lives. And if you're listening to this, people like me get killed, right? That's why a lot of people don't want to speak up. But if everybody speaks up, then it's different. If everybody knows, then it's different. But if it's only a few, they pick you off and they take you down. 
And that's what's happening. The presidents of the countries that didn't go along with the scam, they're getting killed. People who speak up, they get killed. Hey, I don't mind getting killed. I honestly don't. Because to live in this world and not do something about what I see, I can't live with myself. And I spent a lot of time focused on the solution, focused on, well, okay, if this is the situation, how are we going to build that new economy? How are we going to build a new way of doing things? And that's where my focus is. My focus is on tools. My focus is on organizational tools to organize us together so that we can actually defend ourselves from freaking nutballs, from a system that is trying to squeeze the blood out of the stone. And I'm saying no more. I'm saying, let's create something beautiful. It's there. All the pieces are there. Everybody is on our side. Everyone wants a loving, beautiful world rather than a fearful, horrible world. They use their media to futurize this future that the government is always the big bad enemy rather than a supporting infrastructure that's intelligent and wise that's helping the people create a paradise here because it's possible, but not if a certain group of humans are always trying to fuck us over. So my name is Elijah or Captain Sweep. This is the very secret plan. And this is one of the reasons why the very secret plan is the very secret plan. Thank you for listening.